My name is Alex Murillo. Um, from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. I served in Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm with my squadron VS-32 on the USS George Washington. And I am currently deported to Mexico. What's the difference between us and any other veteran that served our country? There shouldn't be any difference. We're both willing to lay it all on the line for flag and country. We're, we're basically MIA out here. We're missing in action and we're trying to get back home. Well, yeah, I came to the U.S. as a baby. Uh, I was uh, maybe a year old or less and I've been deported since 2012. So you spent your entire adult life in the United States? Yeah. Your I, entire life in the United States? Yes. All my earliest uh, memories are from the U.S., like any other American kid. I grew up in the U.S., yeah. Realize and recognize us. We're U.S. soldiers. Uh, we are yours. It's no secret that veterans get in trouble after serving our country. That, that's no secret. We get in trouble. Um, the transition from military life to civilian life is sometimes not an easy one for us, and um, sometimes we don't get the help doing it that 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 we need. Uh, I was charged for cannabis and. I was um, given 37 months in federal um, prison, and I served my time, and I expected to go home. My kids were waiting for me, and I never made it home. I learned my lesson uh, with my first charge. It was my only charge, it's my first charge, and it's what got me deported. Uh, I never want to get in trouble again, I just want to go home. We want to go home. All of us here, uh, as you notice right now, we're all Americans. We all speak really good English. Be why? Because we're Americans. We spent the better part of our lives yeah. in the United States of America. Yeah, now, and then now that we're here in Tijuana, now, it's God, kind God, of like go. weird so, for us because uh, we're actually strangers in a land where we were born. How do you how do you do that? How do you go figure? We're, we were born here, but now we're strangers in our own land. You know, it's it's really weird, and and it's so awesome that we were able to actually recruit people and have people from the United States come across the border to support us because our own people here in Mexico don't support us. Our own people here in Mexico, we experience reverse racism on a daily basis. Why? Because we're not considered a 100% a, a Mexican. We're, we're pochos. We're uh, considered uh, traitors. What was the word? Pochos. Pochos? We're considered traitors to uh, the Mexican democracy, Mexican country in general, because we, we left our country and now we're being forced to return not because we want to, but because we got kicked out of the United States. This is our wall of shame painted on the wall of hate. This wall of shame right here represents all the veterans of the United States Armed Forces that were immigrants that have been deported. You'll notice that on some of these we have an RIP on them because they have they have died here waiting for their benefits or waiting to go home the ones that have died have actually been allowed into the united states and gotten a full military honors gotten buried in a veteran cemetery closest to their home and that's one of the things that really doesn't make sense to us if i died right now if i died right now i can be i can go back I can go back and be buried at a veteran cemetery closest to my home. 
with full military honors. But because I'm alive, I can't do that. I'm deported. But right here, my name has been here for the past uh, for the past six years. I haven't seen my kids in over 10 years. I know I have a grandkid now and I haven't never seen him. So I just want to see my family. I just want to, I just want to be home. There's been a lot of bills proposed on our behalf, but they never went nowhere. They didn't come out of the committee because, uh, because we don't have the money to lobby anybody. We don't have the money to offer our, our congressmen and senators to actually get off their fucking ass and do something on our behalf. I'm a veteran. They talk about me so much. They talk, they say they love me. They love us so much, but yet when we need help or when we're facing a crisis like we are now, nobody wants to do anything. We've had a lot of people go through coming back into the United States that actually stop by our office because they don't believe it. They don't believe that U.S. military veterans are actually being deported. So they go by our office and they're dumbfounded. And we've had to, a typical day in the office is me having to explain to a lot of American citizens why, you know, deportations are actually happening to U.S. military veterans, even though they don't believe it. We're located just a few yards from the uh, port of entry or international port of entry, the Chaparral Pet West. My name is Robert Bivar. I'm a Blue Star father. My son is currently at, uh, serving active duty with the uh, California Air National Guard. And I'm also a co-director here in Tijuana of the Unified U.S. Deported Veterans Resource Center. Uh, strategically located because our concern is to intercept veterans that are being deported because that's a deportation area. And uh, the reason for that is because we want to help them to integrate into the community as productive members of the community. When you get deported, uh, besides the anxiety, the depression, the trauma, of you know being deported, torn away from your family. Most of the time you're gonna be deported without no money, no documents, a shirt on your back. That's about it, you know, nothing else. And if you get here and you don't know anybody, you don't know the city, the culture, you have no support, how do you expect to survive? You, they don't buy you a bus ticket or anything when you get to the border, Just they just, take your handcuffs off at the border and say, have a good day and good luck. My name is Juan Salvador Quiroz Barragan, and uh, I am a United States Army deported veteran. Uh, my, my grandparents and my entire family moved to the United States 35 years ago. Um, I've been to Mexico maybe three times in 30 years. It was kind of hard because like, I, I knew I was getting deported, but I never realized that they were gonna ban me for life and me for a possession of cocaine. They gave me three years and deported for life. I, I didn't understand either. I thought I was gonna get maybe um, house arrest, drug programs, probation. With my wife's medical conditions, she comes six months, leaves for six months. It's really hard for them to adapt because like I said, my wife and my children don't speak Spanish. This is, this is, this is not their home. I mean, they keep the faith and hope that one day we get to come home again. Uh, my name is uh, Jose Cardenas, and um, I got drafted in 1970 to 1972. I went to the National Guard, no, reserves in the National Guard, did seven years altogether. I grew up in San Diego. I uh, went to elementary, uh, Sherman Elementary. I went to Gompers Junior High School and Lincoln High School. Um, can you talk about what it's like uh, to be so to not be able to see your family? It's hard. I mean, it's hard because sometimes. See, I got a I got a son that just he did four tours in uh, uh, one in Kosovo and and three in uh, Iraq, and. He's, uh, he came out pretty bad, you know, PTSD. And he stayed with me for a while, but then I couldn't handle him because uh, I couldn't take him to the hospital or anything. And it, it's hard, it's hard to 
because you don't know how to deal with it, you know. But yeah, we've been struggling all this time, you know, because we don't have a... It's not too much chance, you know. Uh, some of the, the friends that I have in uh, Facebook, you know, they mostly are military. And they ask me, you know, say, how the hell did, did they deport you? I said, well, I told them, well, we, we are expendable, just like in the military, you know, me. Once they don't need you, they, you know, so. It's like when I got in trouble, it was uh, a lot of things happened. The, the, how I got in trouble because first I uh, I got divorced, so uh, things were really bad, you know. And then while I was getting divorced, I got hurt, and then I lost my job. And then in time, one of my kids get killed. And once it, this guy comes to me and say, you know, uh, I could help you and, you know, you just got to do this, you just got to do that. And, you know, when you're in the corner, and even though you, you, you don't want to do things, but you do it because you, you don't have a way to, you know, it's, it's like you try to survive, you know what I mean? It's, and when you're in that situation, sometimes you... You do things that you don't want to do. I mean, I pay for my mistake, but it's just like uh, I still pay, you know, so. <laughs> I don't know. Well, like, like I told some of them, I said, well, some of us don't have that much time, you know, so. We've been doing this for, I've been doing this for 10 years, so. And like right now, um, the group is our family. We're all deported veterans and we work together. We speak on a daily basis. We write letters to Congress. We, we, we make phone calls. We set up meetings. We have weekly uh, conference calls. We sign assignments to each deported veteran on who they need to call which state and we all do that. To be around deported veterans is joyful. Mm -hmm. It's joyful because we're a brotherhood and we understand each other. I just try to be there for them because I'm it's hard I can see sometimes when I do bump in with them that I'll ask them how are you doing and they're like oh we're fine we're okay but I can tell a lot of them have PTSD already a lot of them have incurred injuries uh, most of them uh, a majority of them are Vietnam vets so if they've got disabilities so they definitely struggle um, financially, emotionally. Worse than poverty in the United States. You think we have poverty in the United States? Over there, you, there's a lot of places that have food, have aid. Here, they don't have anything. We have a veteran that opted to cross the border illegally and got caught just so that he can get his medication in jail. He's doing 54 months. Husband and wife should be together. A partner, couples should be together. And all he aspires for is to come home and to recreate that bond, that time that he lost with his children. 
I didn't want this for my kids. They deserve a father figure. And I worry about my son. He's 15 years old. He's in high school. He's a freshman. I wonder what he does. Who he's hanging out with. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm cons- The way I was brought up, my culture, is um, I'm the breadwinner. I'm head of household. Once you get deported, that blanket is yanked from you. And that's a burden that you put on your family. Because in my case, my wife has to support my kids. And not a, I'm not there to be a role model. And I can't support my family. And I struggle with that on a daily basis. Uh, here, here we are, still together. And um, both fighting for something to be corrected that is so wrong, so wrong to even say it. Deported U.S. military veterans.